have with me today a most extraordinary uh, woman Geeta Balakrishnan um this is the book that she's written it's uh, published by Rupa and it's the most extraordinary account of uh, uh, a 70 day walk from Kolkata to Delhi covering 1700 kilometers and um you know meeting people and um looking at structures looking at design along the way and encountering the most amazing things that make india what it is you know confounding but also so wonderful in its diversity and its kindness and uh, geeta if i may say so your you know reading about you is really uh, it makes me it makes my heart <laughs> sort of overflow with emotion there's so much adversity that you've uh, uh, overcome in your life and it's quite remarkable that uh, you know you choose to uh, live your life with so much energy and so much uh, so much joy that uh, reading this was most inspiring so i wanted to put that out there welcome Thank to you, the Captain. foundation conversation and um uh, of course you're here not just because you've written this book but you're also an architect you think deeply about urban design you've encountered all kinds of design uh, on this amazing walk um but i want to start with uh, i know you've talked about it in your book but i'd like readers to get a sense of why you chose to go on this walk and really what it meant for you what it meant for you when you began and what it really did for you when you stopped so yeah thanks thanks kaveri for having me on this uh, uh, platform so um it, it, the journey like you said um uh, for me it was important having seen what i did in my life it was important to live uh, every day with um trying to make a difference trying to understand and explore and do as much as i could and uh, you know while this at uh, the idea of this walk was um came to mind in 2017 when i read an article about priya that walking from uh, oh. mumbai bombay to amritsar with her father um it was for a cause of peace and it was uh, you yeah. know it was a peace march as it was called <laughs> uh, i was just blown by the idea and i said you know what a thing what you know uh, to ex- experience india from that quarter of uh, from that lens of being a traveler on foot uh, which you know most of india is still is yes like, uh, you know some of us sitting here are not maybe but most of india still uh, is pedestrian largely and uh, to be experiencing it from that that lens became very important to me it took 5 years for the idea to really mature and uh, come of age and it was when um, covid struck and we started seeing people on foot getting back yeah. reverse migration happening is when i committed although it's kind of uh, uh, ironical that they were in a situation where it was matter of life and death for them while i was looking at exploring but i still felt that's when i should get out there and um, you know take on this adventure right and what a remarkable adventure it turned out to be uh, did you imagine some of the things that happened along the way that yeah. they uh, i i think i missed your second part of the first question where you said uh, what did you imagine it would be like yeah. when you started it so like i said it was very exploratory when when we started i, I, I was just out there i knew it was to be about design so we had put forward we, uh, you know we had put together uh, uh, flash cards presentation um, uh, what do you call uh, um, uh, prompters you know certain text prompters or image prompters that i could use for conversation with people along the way so um, but as i went along you know so much changed because you start talking to people and you realize oh this doesn't work this technique or this aid that i've carried with me doesn't work we need to re uh uh revisit what we are doing and so i had a back end team working and uh, giving me stuff as i walked and of course there was a uh uh team that went with me um by the end of it i uh, and i think what lay beyond the walk is what kept me going uh you know for sure because i had plans beyond the walk and we identified six uh, solid areas to work on uh at the end of it once uh, because of my encounters with maybe 
uh, lack of conveniences on the one hand to uh, the experience I had with construction workers or persons yeah. with disabilities, uh, maybe nature, you know, uh, interacting and figuring out what it's like, understanding what people along the way thought of design, uh, all this kind of shaped uh, what what was to come. Yeah. Right. So what were these six areas that you identified? Uh, to start with, I did mention construction workers. So yeah. I'm going a little chronolo chronologically. Even before I started the walk, I wanted uh, two construction workers to flag me off. Uh, right. And I thought they could be the VIPs. And it was so hard to connect with two construction workers because uh, designers and architects who actually design buildings do not necessarily talk to the construction worker directly. Yeah. So you had to go through many layers to identify these two. And what shocked me most about Kolkata was at that point I wanted one woman construction worker and there were no women on site. Uh, right. And I don't think it was only to do with COVID. Um, right. uh, as we go along, I'm realizing that the number of construction workers, uh, women construction workers is only reducing uh, on construction sites. There are women who actually are bunching up into groups of six uh, and taking turns taking care of their uh, uh, the children while the other five work and they're actually splitting their uh, costs as well. So that became, you know, uh, things like that became um, um, evident and became uh, one area of focus. The other one was universal design where we're talking about designing without barriers, whether it is age, whether it is construction, whether it is uh, um, um, gender, whether it is disability or ability skills, uh, making sure that we design without barriers. And this came about from an interaction or a, a, a encounter I had with a, a person with visual disability at yes. Latia in, in Madhya Pradesh. Yes. And uh, it was so beautiful to see him move around his house with complete ease and I was stumped to even realize that he couldn't see and uh, when and he said when I step out of the house I have to have a chaperone I, there's no way I can manage and hence the fourth walk that just got over uh, in January which is not mentioned in this book uh, yes. but is focused on universal design came about uh, and uh, started raising uh, uh, awareness on the need for people to, common people also to uh, develop empathy on in this space so that when they commission a building, they make sure that they are designing for all. Right. The th third area I mentioned that uh, design is little known, architects are completely not in anybody's <laughs> memory as you walk. So I think uh, this walk was also about waking my community up to be visible, so right. hence design literacy. Uh, you know, telling people that there is something called design. And I, I understand, you know, there are people who think this is a bit of arrogance because uh, when villagers and people traditionally build their home, I think their yeah. wisdom was completely unparalleled. But uh, as you so mentioned the, that towards the end of the book that, yes. you know, most people actually design their own homes. Home, yeah. A very few formally uh, design yeah. their homes. Actually, employ but as you, uh, you know, as they progress from using their traditional yeah. ways of building and yes. move on to uh, newer, newer ways of building, they kind of lose their way, and that's when probably some some amount of guidance is required. Right. So design, making design accessible to the poor, design literacy, and traditional wisdom uh, became the other three areas, and of course, environment and infrastructure, which you are so. Uh, uh, you so passionately uh, uh, are involved in yourself. So yes, environment and infrastructure became very important when I experienced roads, highways, uh, toilets, the la or the lack of them. Uh, saw water bodies along the way, and then realized, uh, 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 you know, how how the whole landscape uh, had changed over a period of time, you know, and uh, where it is headed even now. These are things that uh, kind of hit me, and these became our six areas of. Right. Uh, intervention. Wonderful. And some of the things that um, uh, you saw along the way, the people you met, for instance, the, uh, the woman Mason in um, uh, Jharkhand. Patehar, yeah. What a story. Uh, she's quite an amazing woman. Uh, uh -huh. We had her uh, speak recently on our platform as well to uh, close to 20 colleges of architecture. So she was, we sent somebody to 
get her connected uh, uh, wow. virtually and uh, what a fiery lady um, uh, she incidentally has now become the mukhya oh wow. as uh, yeah as the uh, uh, panchayat head and she talked and she's a uh, post graduate by the way right you no know, she struggled she... suffered and made made herself uh, educated herself again from the adivasi community where women do not are not expected to study they are ex- not expected right. to work uh, and that's where she uh, came from from latehar and uh, yeah she's someone again i took a lot from took a lot of strength from so that that concept of show stoppers uh, kavi yeah, i love that for that yeah, yeah i love that and and there were things like the lifeline express you know again a story that uh, how how many of us know about but what a fantastic and 1991 Yeah. 1991 and we still don't know about it the lifeline yeah. express majoli was parked in majoli as i walked uh, through madhya pradesh and uh, uh, it's it's by the impact india foundation in uh, sync with the railways and uh, uh, for close to 30 now 40 years is it 30 years yeah. 30 years 33 years yeah. they've been uh, uh, going from village to village uh, over 12 months it's a route and they have uh, 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 modified an entire train to have uh, to become an operation theater there are surgeons who are giving of their time um, and uh, i i i wonder why architects are in the same way yeah. or design as well yes yeah. and then you know you come upon something like the solar energy park in breva and you realize my god you know when you hear about these things being inaugurated you don't understand the dimension magnitude yes. and that's what you talk about uh, uh, so i think the most marvelous thing about your book is it makes all these things come alive you know it makes you Thank feel you. that you're part of the story i know everyone talks about india's growth story and all that but there's so much more to it as well you know that the story of changing india Uh, and that to me is the most profound thing about uh, your book the energy the uh, the hope the aspiration i mean there's so much that we don't have but there's also so much that we have doesn't that and the, num- and the number of people yeah yeah doesn't that make you feel uh, <laughs> sometimes a little overcome uh yes especially when you when you meet people who yeah. pretty much are uh, have not nothing much nothing, and they yeah. tell you i i mentioned that in the book also they tell you hum santosh the you know exactly and most of us are craving for what next what next and yeah. here they are with the uh, working day after day in an anganwadi kapuri devi and uh, yeah. she tells me that i'm perfectly fine i'm very happy what for what she must be getting 400 rupees a month uh, yeah. a little more i think now a little more and uh, she's hoping that uh, they're going to enhance the anganwadi workers pay so it's a little more than um, i have it on record but i can't remember off uh, off hand on what she's been paid but, but still and and the kind of uh, time that is required from uh, the anganwadi worker i think they're the most uncelebrated Uh, of uh, right, all yes. past uh, pu- public servants, you know. And when you mention four hundred rupees uh, uh, or whatever it is, thousand, two thousand, I must mention here that the first almost a decade of their lives, they probably didn't get anything. Exactly. They probably got They're supposed to be voluntary. Yeah. yeah. Voluntary. Yes. Yeah. So they they were they were actually giving of their time. Now they've started. You know, yeah. they are on the payroll. Yes. So there's so many things to unpack when you read your book. You know the the woman's uh, work, which goes un unrecognized. Um, uh, the changes we've seen on the roads and highways. Um, when you talk sometimes about encountering uh, such good facilities in the middle of nowhere, but also some terrible ones. You know. Um, so I think. Uh, yeah. Sorry, go on. No, no. So I'm just saying that. it tells you both of the positive as well as perhaps not so positive parts about the changing india as well so i think uh, that boxes are being <coughs> ticked off that you need to make need to, available yeah. these conveniences but maintaining them uh, uh you know uh, and when you when you're ticking off a box where you calling it a physically handicapped toilet Why right. it should be called toilet for persons with disabilities, but a physically handicapped toilet. But it is under lock and key. 
yeah. uh, whether it is at a railway station or at uh, 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 you know the toll gate the facilities are there so uh, i think ensuring that they get uh, maintained and used is also something that uh, needs to be looked at very very closely uh, uh, i think for that changing story to be uh, more yeah. successful than it is today yeah right so um uh, agita tell me now uh, how are you actually going to make sure that all your learnings and there's so much all your learnings find a way to uh, be part of policy intervention because that is always the big question for anyone who works in this area and you've not worked only you walked <laughs> literally the talk so at the end of the day we are still pretty much governed by the state and their private players but getting to them for instance as you said most architects don't even know who the construction worker is you know the last mile you don't even know them how does one actually get oneself heard and you know makes difference to policy so um, on the latter part which is an easier thing on getting architects Uh, uh to start talking to their construction workers i think we made some headway because that's my community and i am right. kind of out there talking to both this sides this is through your ethos foundation yes through ethos right. foundation on both sides we are uh, uh we are holding workshops we getting architects to come and show uh, construction workers how uh, uh drawings can be read by them uh, oh. so that they become a little more literate and uh, you know and are not just following instructions by word Uh, so those are things that are happening but on policy uh, that's a hard one to crack because yeah. uh, the levels are uh, of play are very very different uh, as i finished the walk i i finished thinking uh, i i am going to be uh, able to reach the powers that be that be very easy with this speech i wrote to uh, pretty much uh, uh, various departments and ministries and ministers uh um, have not really got too much of a reply uh, from anybody just yet but i think action will speak uh, we are working on a, a particular project in a village in madhya pradesh and uh, where we are trying to come up with guidelines for the local to build uh, oh. uh, there are already guidelines in terms of the government rules but in terms of preserving local identity uh, uh, right. you know having certain vocabularies that could uh, be there and if that kind of becomes a model village where uh, um, the local because that's another thing that i saw the local getting transformed and what is local what is vernacular uh, is something that's changing at such a great pace that yeah. there will not be too much local left very soon yeah. if we don't do something about it so um by by creating something uh, in this model village in madla in madhya pradesh um and maybe bringing in you know the eyeballs there after that happens is something that uh, i'm hopeful of but i do intend maybe after these elections writing once more to uh, uh, all the departments to see if we can uh, find some some way in for instance when i walked odisha which is again not mentioned in the book uh abhi i did konarak puri puri bhuneshwar and realized that uh, in fact one of the students brought it to my notice because there were students of architecture around me at that point in time and he said that pipli is a craft you know pipli is the applique work yeah, craft yeah, of course they're so kind of yeah pipli is a craft kind of is seeing its end because a uh, highway was built which took tourists or travelers away from this this used to be a thoroughfare Right. and uh, highway was moved from there because of which tipli as a craft is kind of seeing its uh, downfall mm-hmm. so uh, bringing things like this to the notice and you know we thought we'll design a uh, a magical mile magical 5 miles or magical 10 miles kind of a project where we right. get different people in different parts of our country uh, imagining or reimagining a 10 mile stretch and coming back and putting it uh, uh, out there for uh if the authorities to see as well as the locals to see if it meets their needs uh, right. is something that we are kind of uh, envisaging but i think i'd also like to talk about the lack of uh any uh, uh qualified course uh, on infrastructural uh, um development infrastructure uh, development and management we right. do have small 5 5 day 6 day courses we do have social 
uh, masters in social work kind of programs right. but rural infrastructure development programs or even for that matter urban infrastructure development or management programs are very few to come by and i think right. that's something that uh, really needs some work um, otherwise you have people who are not too competent taking these uh, on ground <laughs> Right. they may be transportation planners but yeah. do not understand the local to be able to uh, uh, meet what is required there right especially when it comes to roads and highways i think our biggest issue is uh, also road accidents for instance and uh, you know you must have been through some harrowing uh, times yourself but uh, you know the idea of road design the idea of blind spots the idea of um uh, driver change in driver attitudes i mean uh, when you talk about transportation it's not just the road design that it you know involves a lot of social behavioral change as well everything has so many dimensions to it so uh, talk a little about the roads because that really is the heart of india isn't it i mean the roads and highways which are connecting us yeah so i uh, yes for sure So there was an Insta post that I put up uh, after the walk, which talked about uh, highways and right. the lack of uh, uh, la- and the unfriendliness to pedestrians. Right. And uh, I had a lot of people trolling me for that, saying highways are not meant for pedestrians. And many of them were Europeans, of course, because they are talking about the autobahn and the ways right. they build there. And uh, even the locals uh, who talked about it said. pedestrians should be banned because they are uh, you know they they are uh, 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 detrimental to fast traffic movement and so on and i uh, you know it's so sad that we don't realize that our country is very different from others where people yeah. still walk to work maybe the next field uh, walk to school uh, children have to cross over to go to their school which is on the other side of the highway and yeah. uh, the only other way is for them to walk maybe 2 kilometers up Right. go under the bridge and come back 2 kilometers yeah. which is which nobody will do i mean you're talking about social behavior yeah. uh, i don't see them I, i don't think it's fair either for them to be so i think uh, uh, the 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 barometer of uh, success of any project is really the satisfaction index of the uh, pedestrian and right. i think that needs to be kept in sight uh, um, uh, i saw carcasses of animals because uh, the, you yeah. know they are taken to graze along the way and uh, you can't keep control of all of them and very easily you would see a cow uh, hit so often yeah. um, so i think uh, and and there's absolutely no shoulder very often there is no there is no uh, footpath for pedestrians which again i was mocked at for seeking it but they're saying that they shouldn't uh, that shouldn't be because we don't want pedestrians on uh roads highways is what i was being told but we are, we are talking about a, a road cutting a place where people used to talk across exactly the road, yeah right? and I mean, that's what line. yeah you and that's what thought, <laughs> and that's what gave that huge feeling of community that sense yeah. of community which i think is another huge loss i think there has been a trans- transformation of lifestyle because of the way we've designed certain things and you know people have become more inward looking uh, not just that i think even mimicking what we do in cities rather than the other way around homes are being built which are built to the edge uh, yeah. up to the compound wall and that entire feeling of that threshold is no more there uh, so yes roads need to be uh, uh, looked at from a different lens for sure Uh, I think they're fantastic in terms of quality. You know, you can zoom. That my travel time is reduced. In fact, even Dhaka, uh, when I walk Kolkata Dhaka, yeah. which is the last chapter of the book, yeah. um, um, the Padma Bridge, the the bridge over the Padma River, was built and inaugurated on June 25th, and I started walking on October 22nd. I tried hard to get permissions to walk on the bridge. I did not. Um, I had to take a ferry. I refused to take a, a, a car over the bridge. I said no. Okay. I'd rather take a ferry across the water, and um, I took the ferry across the water. But that entire ecosystem that was there on the banks of the river, which okay. where people used to use ferries to cross day in and day out, 
which had uh, uh, you know the cars would get onto these ferries to take yeah. the car across yeah. um uh, people would eat hang around there for 3 4 hours the right. whole livelihood have changed because and yeah. that entire system has changed because of that so while i think it's beautiful it's cut travel time and for those i i believe they used to spend a whole day you know to get a, get outside dhaka because uh, they had to take a ferry now it's just a few minutes and you're on the other side that's great but i maybe this should not have been completely uh, uh, you know uh, done away with yeah there's so many uh, so many aspects to everything that you're saying and everything you've written about uh, it's it's quite a tremendous work of uh, scholarship but scholarship that is also uh, experiential i mean you know you've been there you've done it it's not you know you're not talking from um, uh, uh, an armchair uh, is there is there one thing one person or one institution that really stood out for you and you thought oh my god this is uh, amazing among a there huge was... list of uh, wonderful yeah. things that's why i said there were so many i'm thinking uh, uh, who or what should i pick but uh, um, maybe uh, since i uh, maybe i should talk about asha as the ngo i have talked about it quite yeah. often um uh, where uh, again since it's to do with uh, brick kiln workers children yeah. uh, um, you know it's an ngo that takes care of uh, uh, the children of brick kiln workers who otherwise are kind of left back in their uh, uh, homes or villages by parents or they go with their parents and hang around on the side uh, and this ngo takes care of them uh, um, and gives them i mean make sure that they are educated and study and there was this a uh, show stopper i mentioned called sumari who, yeah who very beautifully uh, uh, articulated for me her love for geography uh, right. and what she wanted to study further so uh, i think through through this uh, um, the reason i'm bringing up this ngo is also again uh, a message to uh, people who build that you know when you draw that line on taking making a choice whether you should build with bricks or uh, concrete or uh, 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 mud or uh, put in a concrete roof or an rcc there is a there is a sumari somewhere who's being affected by it you know yeah. because of your choice and that's something that uh, we need to keep in sight when we are designing making our choices every line that we uh a draw has an implication on someone's life uh, for sure and your site does not end i mean any any client site does not end with the site but it actually goes beyond uh, uh to be you know even even uh, even the world in fact for that matter because everything is kind of interconnected wonderful uh, agita just a last question because you know reading about your own personal trauma as well it's really shaken me um how how do you personally i mean uh, of course i see a lot of it you channel through through the walk through your runs but how do you personally keep yourself so optimistic and so uh, uh so um, alive you know you uh, there's you talk about walking with your senses but you're living with your senses you know it's an amazing thing how do you do that So I think uh, uh, I have been reflecting on what, why I was able to overcome the trauma. That is when I was raped at sixteen. How I was yeah. able to overcome that trauma. I've been trying to reflect, and why is it that some others don't? Uh, yeah. And if there is a message or a or, or a, 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 a succor that I can provide them through my uh, my understanding of my life, uh, is something that I have. uh 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 dug in deeply to understand and i recently did a tedx talk as well on this uh where uh, i i think after speaking to a few of my friends i realized that it was probably because i chose to be uh, very self centered at that point in time very selfish i said nothing else matters but what i want what i want to do what i want to get and and hence um it became important for me to finish my schooling well finish my exams that were on the corner finish my college uh, even even in the relationship with my husband it probably when it comes to a physical relationship very clearly it's 
me who prevails over uh, uh, very often because uh, I think I I make it a point to uh, insist on certain things, and I think there is no shame in doing that when you've been through something so big. And if you need to overcome that, I think you need to put yourself center stage. Uh, uh, and I think you often say charity begins at home, so you begin with taking care of yourself. before you go out and i think that has helped me uh, in good stead very often in our society we are expected to as women particularly to yeah live for others to take care of others and put yeah. others first but i think um, not just because of my trauma but even otherwise i think it's essential to put yourself first uh, wherever possible yeah and you have remarkable parents as well you talked about your father uh, fighting that court case yes Would you like to speak a little about him? You lost him uh, recently. Yes, so I remember um, him sitting on my bedstead just the same night. Uh, I, I I don't know if my mother's going to watch this, but uh, yeah. So him sitting it by my bedside and and saying that you've been extremely brave because I, you know, actually had to walk across to my neighbor's yeah. house uh, uh, over over a compound wall which had exactly. glass beds on it. Oh. And yeah, and when I reached their house, and Dad was sitting there, and he and he didn't know of any of this, so he came from the front of the house, and I was from the back. And um, when he said this to me, I said, "Whose daughter am I?" And he said, "No, I don't have a shred, shred of a fraction of the uh, courage that you have." It's not that we spoke on this at all after that. You know, it was just that we went on to do the next thing. But I knew I was. They were there. I used to crawl into their bed till I was twenty-one. um uh, i would wake up at night miserable and my mother was a powerhouse also uh, uh she was just there for me and uh, with anything that i needed and uh, yes i think um, i didn't talk of this in public until my dad passed away i just felt i had to wait for him uh, he had been through hell and he kind of blamed himself a little bit also i think so i wanted to, i didn't want to add to his agony But even my children is 2018 is when I told them about it, and I said now I'm going public and everybody can know. But my husband knew even before we married. So yeah. How did your boys react? They just were so proud. I think uh, uh, I'm sure they were completely stunned and moved for sure. I remember it was on a holiday on a trip that we were out at Alaska or something where I told them about it, and uh, yeah, they were very very uh, uh, overcome and. I think uh, uh, I'm sure they admire uh, me for what I am, and probably they also started seeing meaning to certain things that happened. Things. Yeah, right. when they were growing up. Uh, otherwise, they may not have understood why I was behaving in a particular way. And I'm hoping that uh, they also forgive me for some of the things <laughs> that might have happened. Yeah. But but to then channel your energies into this new life of sort of you know. Um, Uh, and and i always feel uh, uh the greater you get the more you can give actually back to the world and and i'm so happy to see someone like you because you know we often feel at our 50 60 you're done you know but there's so much more that we need to do and we we want to say right and true wisdom only comes with the hard part of living you know and uh, by the time you can actually give back to the world they think Uh, you know it's time to retire and put you on the shelf so it's so wonderful to see you actually you know making a difference and telling the world this is you know perhaps the lens that you should look at the world through that's again a remarkable thing isn't it thank you i think this is what got me through as well uh uh you know looking at things differently doing things differently uh, uh, not for the sake of doing it differently but finding yeah. those gaps There is a purpose. Yeah, seeing those gaps and saying they need to be filled. Now, how do you, uh, how do you uh, get everybody to join you on this? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not here. As, it's not competition. It's collaboration. It's collective. Yeah. And how do you get everybody together? Is something that uh, I ask at every step. Uh, even with my team, that's something that we keep talking about. Put yourself in the other person's shoe. What did? What would they want? And how would they want this crafted? and uh, what would make them excited about this cause and why would they join you 
is something that you need to uh, think about to be able to bring about that moment for instance we have right now about 39 colleges of architecture that have wow. made our cause clubs there are 400 plus colleges by the way but 39 wow. of them have made our cause clubs in their in their colleges and uh, they are they are creating activities for them based on social responsibility and they are kind of uh, uh, executing them and talking about it taking it to the world so yes the moment's growing wonderful and i wish you all the best and i, I look forward to the sequel Oh, <laughs> thanks. I, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure people will enjoy a second one, but let's see. And I look forward to the movie based on the book. Oh, lovely. Okay. I'm thanks. sure there'll be one very soon. It's truly inspiring. Thank you so Thank much, Dr. Balakrishnan. It was a pleasure to speak to you and to understand the difference that you're making to the world.